mix it up a bit. True, and Yapsor Earthshaker is another one that I think yeah. of a lot as a hero that he's really shined on. Even in strange circumstances, you look at the draft thing, how is this Earthshaker going to get anything done? And that's where Yapsor really shines, finds those openings. And that's the heroes now. Shadow Shaman, another highly contested hero. It uh, enables you to do so much, right? Good disable, good pushing ability, good yeah. lane support. It kind of takes a lot of boxes. Yeah, very easy first pick. I think if you have first pick overall, uh, one of the ones you want to eye. But if Night, like Night Stalker's still in or Bounty's still in, those are two heroes that, uh, although maybe in Captain's mode, they don't necessarily replace uh, mm -hmm. the, the importance of a Shadow Shaman. In Captain's Draft, it's different because you're not going to get those middle phase bans. You can kind of be a little bit more open, I guess, about your strategy in the, the beginning in terms of being uh, countered. Do EG still play Wyvern? Not no, after the horror of... Uh, <laughs> it's been banned on now, but I think the question will be, I, like, I assume Crit's moved a little bit. That's uh, true. I wouldn't be surprised to see something like um, early Spirit Breaker from either team. Um, this is something that EG really heavily valued a few months ago. Yeah. Um, as, for, as for an early pick, again, like, look, which heroes can move around and make plays in this pool? That's often something that teams prioritize first. Spirit Breaker really stands out there. There you yeah, go. And they set a big NA meta a while back, too, where, like, every team was picking Spirit Breaker. Very early on in the so draft. Shadow Shaman or Bounty? Last bond. Oh, that's a tough I would, one. I'm giving you two options. I think Bounty, if I were to pick, I think he's a little bit harder to play around once he gets momentum, whereas Rasta, when he looks good, he looks good, but you see those games where he feels a little slow. If he falls behind, he gets a little flat. I still feel like the Night Stalker might be more important, but... I feel like it's safer to first pick. They ban Ursa. Well, maybe going for the Underlord. It, it looks like Secrets bans feel like they are more of a counter thing, where it's like they have a specific thing that they want and they're getting rid of the good counters. Like we used mm -hmm. to talk about the, um, like if you're building illusion heroes, you wanted Magnus, right? You want to yep. power people to get rid of, uh, give some extra AoE. And then this looks like if you're trying to counter someone who has BKB, buys it early, right? You have the Winter Wyvern curse, you have an Ursa, some tanky, not very movable. Uh, melee hero would be something that Wonder you would Lord look is, for, is like I'm looking at, right? yeah, like Magnus, Wyvern, and Ursa. Um, if you're picking it for secret, they've done some fun stuff with Underlord it's in the also past a, too. A lane winner. Uh, speaking of lane winners, yeah, there he is. Maybe worth reiterating as well that Meepo still in the pool. Something that we talked about uh, in the wheelhouse for secret on oh, occasion. That's very nice too for the. Uh, the you know, old, with the, they already uh, have Magnus the Wyvern ban, gone. and if they ban the Sven as well, I think a lot of the Meepo counters are kind of out of this pool. They could like pick both, I guess. Or because they won't have any bans now. That is the only downside. Meepo Sven? That's true. If you saw that Wyvern and Sven ban, you'd be like, okay, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna do something. As far as... There's uh, a Lich as well. Razor. Two pretty high-tempo heroes, both Razor and Rasta. I like to fight early. It's very tier one. see that both teams do favor the Bounty and Shadow Shaman. Like, these two heroes kind of do opposite things, but I know from speaking with players, these two, they're, they're the go-to. In this kind of draft. Remember in Midas mode when Team Liquid would random four heroes and pick Bounty? Yep. To kind of like get this, to assemble the whole team to, to one goal. Or gold. In terms of decent position fives, it's really just Lich and Dazzle, honestly. Uh, Undying maybe would probably be the best option for an NA team. Or you play maybe like. They could run a Visage, something like a Visage as well. Oh, that's for five. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, very strong lanes coming out at the start from Secret, and this already removes some potential uh, laning matchups you don't want. Um, against, again, Razor is just a pain to lane against, and instead of having that defensive ability that he had before, again, pushes a little bit faster, fights better, harder to kite. We're kind of assuming Razor is mid. Are there any good matchups left in that pool to deal with the Razor? It's, a, well, it's pretty tight. If you look at how they, how they drafted, actually, they ban Ursa and they pick Razor. So they, they ban the, the, wane, the lane winners. And they they pick them right. You don't want to, you don't want to offer any way to come back into the laning stage. You want to just completely dominate from minute one, and this way there's no there's no way they can contest their off lane. Yeah, there's really nothing particularly enjoyable to play. You could look at something maybe like a pugna, someone who's just like generally very fast and can just blast the wave, but. Then you're playing like a Pugna mid, and then that kind of puts you into a certain strategy. Invoker, Razor, I think it's Razor, Razor favored, but Invoker can kind of, he, he, he can get it done, right? He can absorb. He's not going to have fun, hits. but he'll do his thing. It's possible. And so they banned, Team Secret banned there, sir. And they knew that uh, EG, you know, Simao's hero pool is quite low. And this enables them to pick Underlord, but they have Razor. They're one of the best counters against Underlord. Just walk him down in the safe lane, take that big doggy for a walk, and just... Yeah. It's he obviously great. reduces physical damage, and the static link helps exactly. you to negate that. It's, it's also added damage, right? Not based damage, so pretty legit. Plus, they have the Shadow Shaman, too, which is very strong, and then they will go for the Poverty Lich. Okay, La massive lack, lack of lockdown. I mean, so 
far in the draft. They have one root on Hadouken. Basically so. no real stuns. Yeah, the problem is that this like dual lane, you tend to think about like Lich Doom or something like that. It used to be very strong, but Lich Underward, uh, Underlord, they don't have... If you get like Shackled on the Underlord, they don't have any way to cancel it unless the Bounty Hunter is going to be top. So the, there's going to be a choice for EG here as to how much they're going to actually commit to Sumail. Uh, we saw a game yesterday with the Underlord where one of the problems was they actually didn't zone him right away. And he got way too many levels straight off the bat, and then he was able to just clear waves. Yeah. So if there is a chance that maybe Secret doesn't put that early pressure on the Underlord, maybe they're going to have to be too focused somewhere else. If EG could create that scenario, it might enable Sumail enough that he can just suddenly start blasting waves and there's nothing you can really do. He'll just uh, dodge your heroes the entire time. We get the Earth Shaker. I think probably the Yapsor hero. I think one of the key heroes left in this pool is probably uh, something like a Pugna. Um, if you look at EG's draft, they don't have the ability to really make plays beyond early game. Lich is usually a static hero who wants to stand in lane and win that lane. Again, there's not too much catch or initiation. Um, and so either that comes from the cores, or they have to play the strategy where they're kind of taking objectives very quickly and trying to death ball. Um, so if you look at heroes like either, you know, maybe Visage, Nature's Prophet, that's something. But does Secret have enough in the way of, say, wave clear or defending their towers to deal with that? So. I think something like a Pugna becomes pretty important for both teams. A little bit of that group up and push. I think um, kind of solo laners would be very nice to round this out for EG. If you do, yeah, as you said, you want the list to just kind of like park himself somewhere. So let's say that he just goes with the Underlord or something. You want two heroes that don't have to worry too much about other rotations they are going to be coming through. I think the, the strat is send Sumail bottom so he doesn't have to deal with the Razor. Play the musical lanes, always getting Sumail away from Razor and getting him good farm. Mm -hmm. Then send... Um, Lich plus one. I was going to say Juggernaut's a, an obvious pick. They don't have any lockdown at all to deal with him, right? No damage. That's not magical right now. Great pairing with Shadow Shaman. Yeah. Sort of a classic cheesy lane combo. And it just fits the tempo, right? Earthshaker has a pretty long ultimate cooldown. So does Shadow Shaman. But they have a lot of reliable crowd controls that I, they can use to fight. I actually think they send the Juggernaut mid. I think uh, Bounty Hunter as a roamer can't do anything against Juggernaut. Um, he's, cool. he's, very, like that. he's very difficult to kill. And that means that you still have the, the winning yep. matchup. Ace is a very good Razor player, too. It was one of his biggest heroes before he actually came to Secret. He's played quite a bit. And then uh, mid one is pretty comfortable on numerous heroes. So, yeah, I like that idea. And then we have a little bit of flexibility in terms of the Fado hero. Could be the Earth Shaker. And could bring out something else. Maybe like a very aggressive Night Stalker, for example, or a Slaughter. Something that's very high tempo that can kind of fight along with that okay, Razor well, in the early game. But what are the mid heroes? Right? We got Invoker and we got TA, essentially, right? Do you see any, any other ones to fight him? In terms of like the more standard ones, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that's kind of it. Oh, the other way you could do it is, is run the Lich in a dual lane and protect uh, one of the cores mid and just let him farm. That, yeah, like we've seen actually Lich spend pretty commonly. It used to be that Lich AA, or sorry, Lich AM was another big one, so. Two huge counters to Juggernaut coming out one after another. Sven with the armor, poking with the crep. Mostly physical dr uh, draft from Team Secret as well, like Shadow Shaman Wards, Razor, Juggernaut. All physical damage. Pogna, excellent counter. Sven, too. And they desperately needed a stun. So that's Sven yeah. solving a couple of problems with the he draft. He definitely rounds it up a bit. Gives them movement speed as well. You can kind of circumvent the lack of stuns with more, more movement speed and mobility with track and Warcry. They're going to be extremely quick. It is a little bit of everything. Uh, in terms of like individual movements as well from Secret, uh, they don't really have the best way for like a four to just move around and do stuff. Uh, like Let's say it's the Shaker. He just kind of wanders pretty slowly. Uh, he has to show up somewhere, he just throws one Fisher, and you hope you can turn that into a kill. If that's going to be his role, then it's not going to be nearly as effective as something like the Bounty Hunter, I would think. Is this an offlane Slider? There's not much left, right? Nature's Prophet, he's not going to have a, a good time in this. There's a lot of wave clear, a lot of protect for the towers. They can't pick it, but it's not the best. It's tough. Slider gives them some more initiation, some good team fights, some more minus armor for their highly physical damage team. They want to... Captain's draft seems to be all about the musical lanes. Because we don't really know who, yeah. like, you don't know who this offlaner, let's say, if that's what's left, is actually going to be playing against. You don't know if you're going to be in a 1v1 versus a Pugna. Uh, can you handle that as a Prophet? Do you think you can right click him down, use your boots, try and dodge the blast with your treants? He's going to be faking out that nether blast the whole time. Just get a techies and stall the game out a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's right. He never actually got banned. <laughs> oh, why did you do this? That's true. <laughs> yeah. The moment of truth. Invoker. It's the Invoker. All right. I haven't seen this hero in a while. Okay. Mid one Invoker, let's go. Invoker, playable, but sort of a shadow of his former self. It's uh, not easy for Invoker right now, I think. Is that fair, Shane? Uh, the, the, so many problems with Invoker right now. Um, first of all, he needs time. He used to like fall back to the jungle, farm up in the jungle. Yeah. Now the game is so fast, people are rotating so quickly, it's, it's difficult to get anything on Invoker. People are skipping Midas, which I think 
might be the, the strategy, actually. Okay. So predictions uh, for this game, who's got it? We'll start with Trent once more at the end. I actually like the EG draft a bit better, which worries me for my bracket, but I will go with EG. I thought those last two picks were very confident and looked pretty solid. All right, so as an Invoker player, the only thing that I'm worried about is the Pogna. Everyone else, you can just dance around. It should be pretty good. The hero's not doing so well at the moment, but I have faith in it. Okay, so Secret? I think Secret draft is better. They have a lot more options. It feels like they can dictate the pace a little bit more. It's harder to catch them as well. So I like Secret draft. Okay, uh, I'm actually going to go in the Secret camp as well. I want to see this Invoker, but uh, it's the Earth Shaker for me that I think is going to break up this whole game and make it possible. We'll see. You're giggling now, Trent, but I, just you wait until no, that Earthshaker I on the other side of the panel. breaks this game way open. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, folks, with that said, we're going to hand it over to our casters as we get into the first game of this series. It's going to be Mott and Brax to take it away. All right, thanks so much, guys. As we jump into this first game, folks, Brax, we are here, of course. The big question is going to be EG's roster and roll swaps. What are you expecting out of this matchup against Secret? A uh, pretty good team in this scenario. Yeah, should be good. We'll have to see what they can bring. It's their true first test, I'd have to say. Yes. Of course, Sumail played pretty well yesterday. He had the Axe game, he had the Clockwork game. Uh, what, what was the third hero that he played? The Beastmaster, actually, with the IO crit yep. helping him out. So uh, we actually have a pause, so we'll get into the game in just a moment. But uh, I think in terms of his first true test, Sumail looked really good, very aggressive. In terms of the Clockwork game, he did really well, had a lot of three-man cogs, some good hook shots as well. You know, people throw this term around a lot, and I think it's pretty stupid, but... It kind of applies here. He's got the killer instinct. The killer instinct, mm -hmm. indeed. Yes, very confident player. They talked about that on the panel. Hi, Slacks. Hi, Slacks. Signing session is now for Team Empire. Wow. If you want to go and meet Team Empire, they're in the back. Make and sure Slacks will be there, there as well. And uh, we're going to jump into the game, folks. Game one of this best of three series. At, uh, what are you looking at here in terms of the draft so far, Brax? So I'm more interested on the lanes from EG's side. They have Lich, so any of these heroes can be played in multiple lanes, like the... Uh, Underlord and the Sven, and it's still really favorable against the Invoker, pretty right. much no matter who goes there. So They have the big lane winning advantage, especially in the Lich and Bounty Hunter. We'll have to see how they can snowball the lanes that, that way. And Pugna, pretty good in the offlane as well. Pretty hard for these heroes to kill. Yeah, this is... Uh, you can just sit there Lich experience as well if you're Sumail. Get experience, then start going for tower push as well. Uh, very non-committal push with the Pugna, which is the biggest thing too. Maybe take some towers early, get some vision for Misery, which is already what, what he's doing as he's dropped this uh, uh, ward on the uber cliff, so... Yep. They're trying to find out all the information to see where heroes are going. Of course, we have kind of an unconventional setup, Fauna playing the Razor. Not typically your most standard offlaner, but we have some lane switches going on here. Yeah, it's just musical lanes for now. Arteezy, he is going to be pivotal. He's been playing mid a lot in the group stages of this tournament, but this time around playing the Sven, getting some help. Obviously, stacks are going to be a big part of the Sven's game here against Secret. Yep, definitely. So, each team, it looks like Misery thought about stealing the ward, decided against it, or the rune, rather. Mid one's just going to grab it for himself. And we're going to get two apiece to start things off. Sumail is going to be the offlane. He might get some help. Looks like Arteezy is going to rotate down here, grab this rune and head over to the mid lane for now, so. Yep, got to dodge this aggro lane. They see the Juggernaut thanks to that Observer Ward on the big cliff. So now they can tailor their lanes however they'd like. And Misery just dropping a ward in the mid lane. Going to harass mid one potentially. Already going to meet Puppy in the river. I mean, this is miserable. First of all, you're already playing Invoker. You're having a horrible day. And then now it's a, du a Lich dual lane. Yeah, he's going to get Stormhammer to start things off in the mid lane. Already a lot of damage. Yapsor is here with the Fisher, but mid one taking a lot of damage. He does have a full five set of tangos along with the shared tango. Fisher comes out. It will block Arteezy, but no follow-up damage. Mid one not doing too much there. And of course, this is going to leave Sumail versus Fata in the off lane. You have the Nether Blast. Obviously, you're going to lose some damage here, but I think both of these players should get some decent CS with their abilities. I mean, the Pugna's got like 70 moves speed over the Razor. Stormhammer mid. They're going to go for him here. Mid one in trouble. They have Misery. Good Fisher block coming in. They need one more auto attack. They can't find it, and crit will not do enough Very damage. Nice. But yeah, this is going to keep happening over and over, and all they can do is keep throwing out Fissures. The Absor does have a million clarities, though, but still, it's not easy. Misery is just sitting in this mid lane. Oh, he's going to get mid one. He's going to go for an auto attack and just try to harass him back. And it looks like mid one has to get the Sal from the courier, and he's just going to get back into lane. So this is a really tough lane for mid one already at the start of this game for this invoker. Yep, this is your last pick invoker as well. Picked into the Lich, so you know this was a possibility going into the game, but perhaps they have enough faith in it. I sure don't. Right, well, we'll see. But uh, he'll get some help from Yapsor. He's sitting here now. They've already got the D ward actually in the mid lane, which is pretty huge. But uh, top lane, Fear, going to be playing the safe lane Underlord. Very interesting there. 
And uh, they will rotate Misery down bottom to give some harassment towards Fata. So Secret, they're going to have to deal with this Bounty Hunter all over the map for pretty much the entirety of the early game. Yep. So EG are completely okay with these static lanes. You know, they just want to extend the lane phase as long as possible. Underworld in the safe lane, sure, not going to get a whole bunch of CS, but he's fine. And then Pugna, same thing, once he gets leveled, especially when he gets to that level 6, then there's a lot of kill potential on the Razor, and then they can just go from lane to lane with Bounty Hunter pressuring these sides of the map, and Secret are going to have to eventually... They need to find something to break up the lane phase. Yeah, and they, they need to move around a bit. The thing I'm concerned about is, will EG be able to stack camps with either Misery or Crit roaming around? I mean, Crit seems like he's just staying in mid for now, and Misery trying to apply harassment. And speaking of which, in the mid lane, they've got the Stormhammer. They have the Frost Blast, tornado good Tornado, good Fisher. They just need one auto attack. The Shackles come out, and they will get first blood. Misery's still alive now with the Ether Shock that does the job for Puppy. And Crit now on the run. They need two more auto attacks to get it done, but Crit will be able to survive. So it is a one-for-one -one trade, but EG secure first blood for themselves. That was so close. Tornado was indeed the right spell for that situation. Misery had a sentry ward on him, but still not enough. Which brings up an interesting point. It's Quas Wex now at the start of the game for mid one. Yeah, it's true. Whether not or not much. he continues to go that, we'll, we'll see. No, Quas Wex does not scale the hardest, and he's also not getting off the best start in terms of experience, so could be rough. It just feels like Misery is everywhere on this map right now. Down bottom and mid. The only place he's not helping out is Fear in the top lane, who is having a pretty good time regardless. Ten last hits already. EG do, doing pretty well. Uh, top of the CS currently is going to be the ace juggernaut in the top lane, though. He's uh, essentially getting free farm here for the most part. Yep, he is free farm. That's a big thing, right? The bounty hunter rotating between mid and bottom, being able to give these matchups an even, you know, more of a favorable time. It's going to be a big problem later on because Secret can't really match that. They have the shaker that's defensive, but it's not the same kind of pressure. Right. And they've had Shaker in the mid lane for the longest time. He's finally rotating out bottom lane. Fata getting dove under the tower. Statically will come through. Misery's going to lose a lot of damage. And they have got the Fisher block perfectly. Sumail's in trouble. Good decrep to keep him alive. And Misery will also be able to get away. They don't have the detection as he uses the skeleton walk rather than the shadow walk to get out. Yeah, very nicely done. Forcing the Shaker rotation. Now they know exactly where he is. And mid has to be pretty scared. And mid one. Not a great time in this mid lane. The Just dual lane. The experience difference. Level four on Sven. It is Almost rough. three on Invoker. Yeah, he's only got six last hits, one deny. RTZ sitting at 20 pretty much, and nine denies as well. So a very good start in this mid lane. They have the Dust. Mystery's been caught out by Yapsor. He has a Fisher available as well as an Enchant Totem. They'll pop it, hits it onto two. A couple more auto attacks, but Misery actually is going to be able to survive. Sumail's a Haste Rune, level two Nether Blast, cancels the clarity that Yapsor had running, and Yapsor will be able to back away. And just all over the place is Misery getting vision, doing some damage to some of these laners, and being very effective. Yep, look at the rotations from the support heroes on Team Secret. Like, Rasta feels like he has to leave this top lane because there's nothing for him to do anymore. And then Alfier's going to get experience on his Unlord and, you know, last hits. It's just, they have to play reactionary the entire time, and they can't really dictate the pace of the game just because of these uh, lane matchups. Yeah, so... Things are shaping up to be pretty good, and this is what we were talking about. Also, Crit stacking up the Ancients here. Yep, you're worried about that, but we've got three there. Yeah, I mean, they're right there. They're going to get some more harass onto mid one, and RTZ is going to have a great time. We'll maybe see Secret contest this a little bit later, but it's going to be very tough, especially with somebody like a tanky Underlord if he comes to fight as well. Well, speaking of Underlord, he's getting ganked up top, huh? Yeah, he is maybe in trouble. The Blade Fear will come out. Puppy's coming in with the Shackles. They've got the Fisher on top of it. Fear's pretty tanky, but not going to survive this one. And Ace will secure it with the Blade Fury right at the end there. Nicely done. It's, uh, it's one of these kills where, sure, it's good, but then once Jug gets six, it'll be... There's gonna be a lot of pressure in that lane, right? He's not gonna want to lane in front of him anymore. So, Team Secret have that to play off of for now. They actually scanned Misery up in the top lane, but uh, they didn't have a detection on them. They decided to shrine up instead. Make sure they uh, back up. Misery's gonna go for Ace instead. He has the Blade Fury and the Healing Word. This is a tough kill. In fact, they're just gonna harass him back. They're not even gonna try to go for the kill at this point. Just giving Fear some extra room as he did go down a moment ago. And again, Crit continues to stack up these Ancient Camps here. Yep, and Team Secret realizing that they really need to play around this top lane. It's their strongest lane they can play off of Invoker. He's not helpable at this part of the game. He actually offers almost nothing to any sort of gank. There's no damage coming out. And then the same thing with the, uh, the Razor. Yeah, this is, it's a bit rough. I mean, forget the Midas for mid one. I mean, he's only level three. He's just trying to get range off. He doesn't have any boots yet, so. Omni slash top lane, Ace secures the kill. Nicely done. Just dives under the tower, easy. Doesn't even need the Blade Fury to get the kill. Yep, nice, clean, easy kill. So what happens a lot of the time is um, you have these lanes that get sacked, right? This mid lane, there's like nothing you can really do there. On a, oh, he's actually all right. Ten, yeah. uh, ten wand charges too. 
the courier sniped by Misery. He was waiting there for a bit. Very big kill. You know, Misery has the exact same experience as uh, Mid One's Invoker. That's depressing. Yep. That's uh, that's not a great start for the Invoker. Obviously, they can get back into it farming a bit better. But uh, at this point, they will D Ward. He is going for two points in Quas, one point in Wex. I mean, this experience, it's level six for Arteezy. He has God Strength now. He has an Ancient stack that he can clear mid one. He's not getting a lot of help. And in the meantime, they're still putting pressure on Fod in the bottom lane as he's going to get decrypt. The life drain will come through. Misery running under the tower. Static Link was already on cooldown. Not much they could do. Sumail wanted to dive further, but instead he's putting so much pressure on the tier one tower with these nether blasts. And this tower is already getting pretty low here, Brax. Yep, the harass on the bottom tower is super non committal as well, so it's not like they're dedicating a lot of resources. They can still continue to dominate these lanes while they chip away at the bottom tower. Yep. And same secret, either have to bring the numbers or get some sort of gank going, but. And they're going to try to do that unlikely. top. They have the shackles coming in the Blade Fury. Fear, again, very tanky, but with an Aether Shock along with a couple more auto attacks and Blade Fury spans, Ace will do the job. And so they're leaving Fear up here on his own. He is getting a decent amount of farm, but he has died, I believe, uh, three times now. So that is a bit rough for. Uh, the Underlord. Yeah, and all three kills on Juggernaut as well. So. Bottom lane, they take the tower for Sumail. He is going to get static link, but he's the fastest man alive. Pugna's move speed is ridiculous. He's just out of there. He's a race car. He's got wheels. Yeah, he really does. Whew. You know, sometimes the best way to help one of your heroes catch up back into the game is to leave him on his own. You need to make plays away from him so that he has room to just last hit freely, get experience on his own, and then he can come back in the game that way. Because there's no way to help Invoker at this point of the game. And here we go, RTZ. He's going to go for this stack clear now. Dealing with the Ancient Prowler Shaman, and this is going to be an insane amount of money. This is before he even has his Mask of Madness. He'll have it with this Ancient stack and more. And uh, this will put them in a very good position. Almost top of the net worth, just behind Ace. I'm sure after the stack, though, he should be top of the net worth list. Yep, and that's after Juggernaut has three kills to his name as well. So, bounces that out quickly. And this is just a good start for RTZ in this mid lane. Not only that, he has more stacks in the jungle as well. And they've already taken the tier 1 tower for Smail. He can move to another lane if he wants to put more pressure, maybe say on mid. Uh, but for now, he's just setting bottom and continues to split push, which we saw a lot of yesterday when he played the Beastmaster as well. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk about some timings, Mutt. So uh, we almost have level 6 up on the Shadow Shaman. Chain Frost. It is going to bounce back, and mid one's in a lot of trouble here. One more auto attack from RTZ. They drop the sentry preemptively to make sure that Ghost Walk isn't going to be able to do anything, and a very big kill. And of course, the Chain Frost bouncing perfectly for crit. This is a Quas Wax Invoker as well. What does he do after the lane phase? He doesn't have levels, he's not going for a hand of Midas, no levels in the x at all. It just feels like he's so far behind, and usually you have that Midas to catch back up into the game. You have Exhort, you have Forge Spears to farm with, that's not going to be the case this time around. And now they're eyeing Yapsor as well. Misery behind the tower, looking to dive this potentially. They've got the Nether Blast, Sumail has rotated over, they're going for the tier 1. They've got the Fisher TPing in, is going to be mid 1. He's got Tornado at the ready, now fought a static linking. RTZ needs to get out of there, he's popped the Warcry already. He's got the God Strike, but he's going to get shackled up and brought down. Very big kill for Secret, now TPing away. They will at least take one for Secret. They wanted more, but that is a very good turn there. And they will drop the Serpent Wards for this Tier 1 tower in the mid lane. Yep, very nicely done. Talking about timings, Ross. When he hits six, make one play, and you can secure towers just like that. It was a very good rotation from Fada, being able to defend the mid tower. Oh, is he trapped? Yeah, I think he trapped him. <laughs> he yeah, he he's he's got phase. He's, he's fine. He's just going to phase out. Yep. I'm phasing. So they'll, they'll probably be able to get some chip damage. I don't think they're going to be able to take this tower. It's yep. like they're just having to back up for now. Still good, though. Fata is going to keep pushing them back with some plasma fields. They'll throw the fissures out occasionally, giving some more space for Ace, which is the big thing. Keep him farming, and he still is top of the net worth. He's doing a great job. And uh, Fear also getting farmed. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, they're going to plasma field. They really want this tower getting close. They do corrupt. Nether Blast is going to get dropped down. EMP, they want to deny this tower. One more auto attack, and they will get it. Fata, perfectly timed with that whip, gets it done. Very nice. Each creep assisting with the tower. <sighs> but I mean, still, right? Sure, you got a tower, which is good. You got the objective you came for, you used the Ross towards, got a tower. Everything's good, except for the fact that we're missing a whole bunch of experience on our mid later. At this yeah, time. I mean, that's the biggest problem. If you if yeah. you forget about the invoker for mid one, everything else looks like it's going well, including, you know, Ace on this juggernaut, but they just need a bit more farm. You need to keep mid one safe. Get him some experience. They have found Misery behind the tower. They've Fisher blocked him, they've dusted him up, and this is going to be a free kill for Secret. And they will find it. Very nice to kill the pesky bounty hunter, always keeping vision behind the towers. It's super important to be able to find this hero because if you don't find bounty hunter, then EG can just maneuver around them and keep farming away from all these heroes, especially with the Sven. They are going to find Sumail as well. EMP, Tornado comes out the Fisher. He decrypts himself just to make sure he can't get auto attacked. He'll back himself away. Crit will be there to help out with the Frost Blast. 
and that'll push them back. But uh, the big thing about Misery dying there, he was almost level six. That's track. Then you get a couple more kills, and all of a sudden you're snowballing out of control. But yep. that stops him from getting that level six. That experience is going to be pretty huge for EG. It feels like Secret want to pressure EG side of the map a bit more, but they're struggling to get their lanes out. Like we just had two or three heroes hovering out on the mid lane after they killed the bounty hunter, but. They can't really make anything happen just because these lanes are always pushed in so far. I think that's why it was a big deal for Sumail to take that tier 1 tower in the bottom lane so yep. early. Keep that wave pushed in constantly. We saw it yesterday, too. It opens up the map big time for them to just keep farming. Yeah. I mean, you can see Arteezy's in the enemy jungle already still farming at this point. He's working on a blank dagger now, getting pretty close, about a thousand away. Um, what does Fear have, actually? We haven't really talked about him. He's looking at an Atos, interestingly enough. Uh, plus, of course, Sol Ring, very good item for, for offlaners in this particular... Uh, patch as well, so. Yep, just farming up, getting tanky. And they're looking for a puppy potentially bottom. Sumail is going to walk in, so is Arteezy. Maybe they're going to commit to a tier 2 tower push here. And they're going to decrypt. There's another blast. They dropped the Serpent Wards. Oh my oh boy. god, they just destroyed him. Wow, he died pretty much gone. instantly. Just like that. They just assassinated him and backed out within seconds. They're staying. Oh boy, and the wards are dropped too to potentially try to turn that. But. So you just wait this out potentially, and Misery might even scout mid one as well. They're going to go on him with a Janata. There's going to be a Tornado on the other side. Chain Frost, I think, bounced up to Fada, but uh, he is fine. Durkin bouncing as well, the Frost Blast. They want to dive this potentially, but those Serpent Wards are still there. And uh, they will be dropped soon. And Sumail, he's got a haste room. Dive behind the tower. Echo Slam coming in. They've got the Nether Blast. The EMP will push them back for now. He's Puppy fine. has respawned and TP'd in. But everybody is fine for EG. And now they can continue to push if they want to as these Serpent Wards are about to expire. I feel like they, uh, I don't know. I guess the wards are pretty much gone now at this point. So, yeah, they can just keep pushing. I mean, it's, it's again, it's that non-committal push. Sumil can just keep Nether Blasting down here with exactly. no real consequence. Puppy. Unless Puppy can find some Shackles or Hex. And he's got it. The Shackle's coming Shackle in. He's got no help. Man alive. I believe Sumail is in some trouble. He's going to go for the kill. The life drain. Another blast. Is it going to keep him alive? The Fisher comes out and cancels it. And they will secure the kill. So getting a little too up there for Sumail getting caught and killed. Yep, nicely done. Still, it took a lot of heroes to do that. Yes. The TP committed. The TP's being committed as well. I mean, RTZ still farming now. Midwood coming in. EMP Tornado as well. Completely out of mana. They'll drop the pit of Malice. Good Fisher on to three, but where's the follow-up? RTZ trying to get away. He popped the war cry. Gosh, Frank's still available, but he didn't have the mana for it. 12 wand charges. He will use them now. Ace looking for an Omni Slash. He's thinking about using it on Fear, and he might. Trying to not fog here, and he will be able to get through back towards his tier two tower. Fear will take the Omni, and they cannot quite bring it to RTZ. But Ace is pretty far up. He's got Blade Fury in one, and now they're going to get crit as well. A double kill, a mega kill three. Oh Fossa, they're diving. They've got the tornado coming in as well. Well, RTZ, static link, 73 damage, 84, getting whipped up by Fada. RTZ slowed up, he got the purge, one more auto attack will do it, and they get the kill. Three dead for EG, and Ace will clear a stack on top of it. Very big fight for Secret. Well, it's like Fada never, uh, Fada never changed roles, he's still playing Razor. What happened? I don't know, he just runs at people, that's all he needs to do. Ooh. They're gonna go ahead and take this tier 2 tower on the top lane. They will drop the Serpent Wards. Fought uh, Phase Drum. Not even gonna use the charge here. They don't need to. And that is a very big objective. Very big three kills for Secret. Now with a 3k advantage seemingly out of nowhere. And this Invoker is starting to get some more room to work with here, Brax. Yeah, he's still useful in these fights. But of course, we worry about his uh, late game scaling. But um, they've been winning so many fights. I wonder how close Earthshaker is to his Blink Dagger. That's probably their next big key item before they can... He's got a ways away. Okay. He's sitting at 250 right now. He's buying a lot of the smokes, a lot of words, huh? uh, buying the detection, obviously, for, for secret. So getting to that is going to take a while, but Yapster, I'm sure, can find the farm. And uh, we'll see if EG can get something going in terms of gank. They're going to get caught by Fada with a static link. No real follow-up. The Tornado's maybe going to clip Arteezy. Oh, not so enough close. range. Wex not quite leveled up enough. You know, something we didn't talk about is that the uh, Warcrack gets removed when the Tornado hits, so he loses all that bonus to armor. That's a good point. Razor and static link coming yeah. out the eye of the storm. Especially nice against the, the Razor and the Jug as well. Yep, Lich gets removed too, or the Ice Armor. That is actually a good point, and uh, it's going to be tough for them when they get tornadoed like that, but... Uh, I mean, what do you think? EG, they've kind of been playing the back foot. They tried kind of yeah. forcing something bottom lane, it didn't really happen. They're kind of uh, not playing their game anymore, right? With Sven, your game plan, you want to sit in your side of the map, farm as much as you can, and then with Pugna, you kind of want to open up the map, take some early towers, but what you can do is you can take the first early towers and then farm a bit afterwards and slow the game down, but they've kind of failed to do that. I feel like they committed a bit too hard for the bottom tier 2 tower. Like, Ross towards were dropped. You can back up at that point. It's yeah. already a win. Now you have 100 seconds to play your side of the map where the enemy probably won't want to make any moves. 
Making moves is what Secret are doing. They're going to head inside the Roche pit. Meanwhile, bottom lane, mid one, was getting shadowed by Misery, and they have uh, him on him. But everybody else, the wards have been dropped. Secret are inside the pit, and I don't know EG. I don't believe EG thinks uh, this is happening. So they're just still going to farm. And uh, even if they, if, even if they do know what's happening, do they want to contest it? Is the it's question. pretty difficult to place to walk in, especially against Shaker and Boker. And also, yeah, they're just going to trade for this bottom tier two tower if they can. They're already TPing though. Mid one's already here, trying to deal with the creep wave. And that is Aegis going to be going to Ace, and uh, very big objective taken again for Secret. They've already taken the top tier two tower, and uh, they're getting mid one and the rest of these heroes back into the game for Secret. Meanwhile, Puppy walking close to Misery. No detection, no sentries dropped just yet, but Misery's going to back himself up. Yep, this ward on the shrine is what let them do Roche. They saw three heroes on it. Double damage happened to spawn by Roche as well. It's yep. a green line for Roche. Ace is in. He wants crit. Arteezing, Stormhammer coming out. Arteezing now backing himself up. Sumail's coming in as well. And Ace is all alone. He does have the Aegis, but he has to spin out of this. Blade Fury will come first. No way to follow up. And he could just play so aggressively. I mean, there's no punish there against him. Yeah, pushing all those heroes back lets you can see his lanes out really easily as well. So, very scary. EG will go for a smoke into the other side of the river. I like this. This is very unexpected. Enemy team takes Roshan. What do you do? You smoke up and you try to fight them while they're split. Like, Ace look at this. has used his Blade Fury. Yep, this, this is, is the perfect time for gank. God Strength jump in. There's the Blink Dagger Stormhammer. They've got the Aegis. Can they get more? Will they back up? Serpent Ward's not up for another 38 seconds. EG, they feel confident that they've just got the Aegis. They don't need to get more. They're going to back onto their side of the river. Happy with what they've accomplished. Yeah, very nicely done. Catches a lot of teams off guard. Because typically, you get the Aegis, you need to heal up, you need to buy items, all those kind of things, push your lanes up before you can converge on an objective, and then boom, you get caught farming. So RTZ is still doing pretty well. 1,000 gold still, he has the Mask Madness, he has the Blink Dagger, what do you think, BKB next for the Sven here? I'd imagine so, but maybe not. I mean, he's playing against Razor and Juggernaut. Right. But the control of the Invoker is also something to consider, though, as well. It's true. You definitely need BKB at some stage of the game to deal with Invoker, but maybe he's more concerned about actually tanking up, getting more armor. I don't know. And we'll see. I like Fear going for the four staff next, though. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Try sure. these heroes. But he is going to get ganked in the bottom lane. Fisher comes out. They have the Omni. Not even sure they need it. He's going to use the Pit of Malice, and he is done. Plasma Field static link. More than enough damage with Ace being there. And this will transition directly into a tier one tower in the bottom lane. Yep. You're talking about Arteezy's itemization on Sven. And uh, it's kind of a... When you get to the situation where you're like, oh, I kind of need two items at this point in the game, that's when you kind of get worried. Yeah. Right? When you think Sven, you think top of the night with charts, super far ahead of everyone else just to be able to play the game because he relies so much on that BKB, especially later on in the game. If he can't get in there, blink on a hero, burst him right away. If they get forced after they have to survive, he loses a lot of strength. He gets kited. I think that's a, the fact that he's not on top of the net worth is also a credit to Ace as well for how well he's been farming and fighting uh, and, of course, helping take objectives on top of all of that. Yeah, of course. So doing very, very well. Yeah. Meanwhile, mid lane, they're trying to find mid one. Tornado will come through. They have found the bounty hunter. He is in potential trouble. They will take the tier one tower, but it's going to be two towers bottom. They use the serpent wards for the tier two for secret, and EG are starting to slowly lose that map control that they were gaining in the beginning of the game. Yeah, they're starting to lose a lot of the space that they could previously farm, and that even without the ages. And this is when it gets bad for that spam. Like you talked about, you would like to have those those two items. He is going for S and Y for his first, maybe a BKB later. They have spotted Ace again, this time without Aegis, but he does have the Blade Fury. He can just spin. He also has the Omni Slash Decrep. He gets the rune. The Life Drain will come through. Can they catch him? They need some way so to fast. slow him down. A Chain Frost, a Frost Blast, anything. Misery with a Janata proc will do the job. It's the Atos coming in from Fear. The Frost Blast, the Nether Blast, and it does the job for Sumail. Very nicely done. And that's an unstoppable spree picked up by the offlaner. My well, greed kills. You know, that was a situation where you can definitely... You have the option to survive. All you have to do is spin TP, but yep. you don't think you're going to die. Atos came from... That was such a ridiculous he, range, actually. He did get the bounty rune. He wanted it well, very badly. That's true. Was it worth it, though? Uh, probably not. They have Yapsir with the Blink Dagger, by the way. We talked about this, and uh, it's been a while, but getting that Blink Dagger is a huge itemization for Secret now in terms of starting a fight, getting aggressive, having this Blink. Maybe they will smoke with it if they have one. That's the big difference. You have these stuns that can come out of Fog that are much harder to BKB in time. Like Blink Sven, you can BKB before he does get it off, but the Fissure from Fog, pretty much impossible, and then yeah. you can follow it up and chain stun before it comes out. Yeah. Gives a lot of options to Secret. SNY is done for Arteezy now. Still farming pretty well. Only 1,000 net worth behind that of the Juggernaut, especially after that kill. And a lot of pressure applied by EG in this bottom lane, making sure this wave is pushed out. They know they don't have a tier 2 tower bottom anymore, so keeping this wave pushed out is very important for EG. I just feel like EG need to, they need to find a way to keep farming the map. You know, right now they're doing pretty well, but once 
If it gets these lanes out, then it becomes super scary for them to move out, especially with the Blink Dagger picked up on Earthshaker. Maybe Misery getting deep wards. I mean, he has a few across the map at the very least. He's got a few, but once uh, Team Secret starts to invade their side of the map, those wards aren't going to do a whole lot. Yeah. When a Secret gets aggressive, maybe around the next Roshan, which is going to be a while, three minutes until it may spawn. So we still have a little bit before we see the next Roshan timer. And uh, we haven't really talked about Samuel's itemization. He has the Aether Lens already with the Force Staff. Now thinking of the Agnum Scepter. Life Drain with Ags, very good spell. Does a lot of damage, really good stuff for Samuel if he can get to that point here in the near future. Yeah, for sure. It'll be a huge power spike, but I'm not convinced that's the item that uh, it doesn't change that much. No. They need more. It's that big BKB plus one item for, for, for Sven. He has that SMY, the BKB, and the quick buy. Mid one, he has caught up. He's got the Hand of Midas. He's got the four staff ready to go. But he is going to get jumped on. God Strength, they decrep him. The blast and Life Drain actually just makes him explode. Shackles now. The Omni Slash coming oh, in. RTZ may be in trouble. The Echo Slam as well. They've got plenty of damage to death. It's going to be three for EG. Secret Art cleaning up. Yapsor gets a double kill. That is the blink reveal and beautifully done from him. Nicely done. Fading Invoker for such a long time. Three for one trade for EG, and what will Secret be able to get out of this? Can you they mean push? Secret one. Yes. Excuse me. That's okay. So, I mean, can they get any objectives out of this? You can see that Ace is pushing in the mid lane, but um, they don't have circle wards. They used them there, I believe. Yeah, if it's farm time, it's time to get these lanes out, get some map control back. Sometimes that happens, right? You kill these people in front of your base, but you can't converge on an objective afterwards. Right. Getting lanes out, getting deep wards down, and just being ready for the next fight. Ace it's usually is, good enough. Ace is being so aggressive, just pushing into this tier 2 tower. They can't really kill him now with what, those Is that a layer bug? Look at his quick buy. Yeah. That, uh, that is a nullifier. Yeah. That's crazy. What about a nullifier this game for the, for the Jug? What do you think about it? Doesn't that suck? I mean, <laughs> I'm asking you. It sucks. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. That's that. No, I don't know. It's uh, definitely an item that hasn't been tested too much. Right. It's still pretty new. The build-up is complete garbage. What right a, into, the, into the helm. What about compared to Meteor Hammer Brax? How do you oh, feel about it? Everything's that? better than Meteor Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll have that in a bit. He actually is really close to the Relic, I believe. He's like, yeah, 600 gold away. Yeah. Um, but we were talking about these deep wards. Misery has gotten some down. And they're actually going to spot Misery as he is trying to drop wards. He gets blown away by the Cold Snap Enchant Totem and Fisher is more than enough to bring him down. And EG will now back up as they're pretty close by in this bottom lane, but they don't want to get caught out. Wow, we've got quite the artist here on the uh, Observer. Very nice. Shout out to JJ. I'll take that as tribute. So, Ace still leading the net worth. Arteezy, he's been doing pretty well for the most part. He is getting close to that BKB. Is that the big item? For, for EG, or do they need even more than that? It certainly helps, but it might have to be like BKB into something, you know, some other defensive item, just to prevent like him getting linked. I guess Link doesn't do that much to spend, especially since he has so much damage anyways, but it does get annoying after a while. Especially if you can't kill Razor. There's also the threat of getting nullified by Ace before he even gets it off in the first place. Yeah, that's true. Which is a big issue. I mean, that Sven relies on BKB so much. Getting nullified is kind of an issue there. So. Is that really the verb nullified? I, I don't know. That's I'm not sure. sure. I guess it is, but it just sounds Active awful. is nullify, so yeah, nullified. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, buddy. That's just the English language. So, both teams just sitting back in pretty much their own jungle for now. Actually, Secret, they're going to smoke up. They're sitting mid. Ace will be on his own for now. Moving across the map, Roche is up in two minutes, so not quite the timing maybe Secret look, we're looking for. But uh, maybe they find somebody here. It seems, though, EG have an understanding of what's going on. And they're backing themselves up to safety yep. at this point. Even though EG are on the back foot, look at these wards coming out from them. They see pretty much everything that happens in any lane. So, very obvious that Team Secret are not on their side of the map. Yeah, the when moment. you see nobody farming bottom, nobody yeah. farming the jungle, it's time to get out of there for EG. It gives you the heads up. You see it much faster than they, they think. Because, right. you know, they don't know they have wards there. So, things have slowed down the past few minutes. Just trying to get vision for EG. For Secret, continue to farm, continue to gain this advantage. It's still 5k. It's been 5k for about a minute or two. It's starting to plateau for a bit. And uh, for EG, I, I think for both teams relates to this next Roche fight, I would imagine getting not only Aegis but Cheese as well this time around is going to be a big objective for, for both of these teams. Yeah, for sure. I kind of, kind of uh, worry for EG's scaling into this game. You have Earthshaker and Ross now, so probably two of the best late game supports right. that aren't like, you know, junglers like Enigma or anything like that. Just because their disables are useful through the entire game, and it's just initiation. Then you go to the other side, you have Lich. Armor's great, but it's just armor. It's not like a stun that comes out of fog, right, that you can initiate with. Right. Bounty Hunter, he's pretty good, but still, it's not the same kind of initiation. 
and uh, typically that's what the games come down to, who can get the first jump. I mean, the, the amount of initiation you get from Yaps or the amount of jump you have is, is kind of insane. You forget even Puppy, he's got a four step as well, so he has a way of exactly. getting in there. And, got and multiple helping his ways team out. of starting fights, right? Yeah, it's the big Echo Slam that's always the threat, and fighting into that as EG is going to be very tough, and that's partially why this BKB is so important for RTZ. He has it now, it just flew out in the courier, and uh, they are ready to fight. Roshan up in 20 seconds, and accordingly, they, they're making the right moves here by moving into uh, a smoke as well. Yep, and they see where they are too. They've seen them cross the river into that high ground area. They're gonna wrap all the way around. They have a ward, which does spot Ace at this point, but he is on the high ground trying to break a smoke. In EG, it's very tough to approach here in this situation. Plasma Field coming in, there's the Godstrom, they've got the stun, can they lock him down enough? The Nether Blast, he's gonna get brought down! Arteezy, more than enough damage with that God Strength and the help from EG Sumail. And now they can head right into Roshan. Now if you're Secret, you might think about buying back here on the Juggernaut, potentially. They have found another on the other side, Misery's been caught and killed, so it's now a one-for-one -one trade. You have to decide whether or not you want to fight, whether you want to head into the pit, or just back off if you're EG, and it looks like that's what they're going to do for now. The thing about using a God Strength that kills, it is needed for sure, but now you don't have it for Roche, right? You can't train into the next objective, which is unfortunate, but it's still worth it, being able to kill Juggernaut like that. The question is, now that God Strength is down, if you're secret, can you head into the pit and just drop Serpent Wards and try to take it yourself? Yep, you can do it as soon as Juggernaut respawns. I mean, especially with the waves the, the way they are. The top lane is pushed in, the mid lane's starting to get pushed in as well. Mm -hmm. So this is a bit of a disconcerting point for EG. RTZ's God Strength down only for 30 more seconds, so it's not the end of the world. It's not, but being able to walk into that area without a smoke is terrifying. Yeah. So we'll see what they, they decide to do here for EG while a secret continue to get wards down, try to get vision, and try to find a way into this Roche pit. Now a 4k lead for secret, so it's starting to climb back in favor of EG after that kill just a little bit. Secret looking for misery up on the high ground, he'll drop a sentry. He knows that there's a ward there, and this is actually very important. Making sure you can clear out your jungle. But uh, it looks like they're blind around the Roche pit for EG though. Yeah, for sure, but EG making the right play, forcing someone down bottom. Very good. Yeah, Absor TPing down, looking for RTZ. They've got the plasma field coming out. He planks himself away just in time. Fisher just a little too late as well. And he doesn't get the tower, but a smart play to back up for himself and get out of trouble. It's a good way to break up this uh, Roshan standoff. Yeah. Force the TPs down bottom, maybe try to get into the pit. We'll see what EG decide to do here or secret. Snowfire not being put to good use yet for Ace. And RTZ is taking over the top net worth spot, as expected when you're a Sven. And he's working on a Daedalus next, and that's really going to be troublesome for Secret. He'll be able to blow people away rather quickly with his God Strength. Game slowed down quite a bit, but uh, there's a whole bunch of tension around Roshan. Neither team can really afford to give this up, especially with Cheese coming out. I mean, just look at these sentries coming out from Team Secret. They're everywhere around the pit. Well, they found action. Misery. Good force away. There's the Pit of Malice. The Fisher is there. Misery's still in trouble. The Cold Snap. Now the Chain Frost's going to come through. It'll take down Yaps, or Misery will fall instead as well. It's a one for one trade. The Chain Frost kept bouncing. Now jumping in RT. Oh, He's got boy. the Storm Hammer on it too. The Cleave. He blows him up. It's a double kill. They're looking for more. Bot is going to get chased down. Nether blasted up, life drained down, one more auto attack, it's the Atos, and they give the triple kill to RTZ. And they're gonna head right into the pit, a four for one trade, and Misery is A-OK -okay with that, Brax. Yeah, if you're gonna be so careful about jumping in like that when you line up for the spend stun, it's just, they die so fast. This Roche is done. Aegis and Cheese for Evil Geniuses. God Strength, a pretty short cooldown as well. They only use Chain Frost as well as the only other ability that was dropped. And, but the uh, net worth is even, but does it feel even? It feels like the momentum has shifted, Brax. It does, for sure. They have climbed back from quite the gold deficit. Now they actually have a lead for once. It's gonna be bad. They're gonna move into this tier two tower as well. Plenty of damage from RTZ. They still have no fodder for 33 seconds here. This should be a tier two potentially, especially with Sumail and the Nether Blast that he has. So they that gave it to, to Sumail, by the way, and they gave cheese to RTZ, which makes sense. Looks tough. That's uh. Bit of a botched initiation, right? Took a bit too long to finish off the bounty hunter that they happened to catch up in the moment there. Good four staff and pit of malice too, just to make sure he's safe for at least a decent amount of time. Yeah, two four staffs inside of EG, so makes those kills a bit harder. The uh, the bounty hunter factor, you know, he provides vision in these areas most heroes can't get to. It's sometimes it's hard to see the effect, but we definitely saw it early on in this game when they were able to split the map very well. We had like three deep wards at the same time, just scouting everything out. It just feels like it requires you to play a different style of Dota if you're secret. Having to deal with this bounty hunter placing wards all over the place, getting vision. 
you got to be on your tippy toes for the majority of the match dealing with this bounty hunter. And they've done a good job. They've killed Misery a lot. They've made sure they've dewarded as best as they possibly can. Um, gem hasn't really been purchased, though, for Secret, which is something to consider. Do you think the, a gem is in order for them in the next few minutes? It feels like it is, but who would carry it at this point of the game? You That's can't really afford to lose it, right? Then you lose all map control. I mean, every single one of these heroes can get blown up on Secret, especially with RTZ in the vicinity. So, I mean, it's a tough situation. By the way, this tower has been at like 27 HP for the past five minutes, and it hasn't been denied. And it's going to be taken down here finally by EG. So, since the beginning of the game, they put a lot of pressure on it, but finally we'll take the Tier 2 in the bottom lane. Yep. It's so much harder for uh, Secret to get the proper jump because Bounty Hunter's always scouting these heroes up. And if you end up jumping the Bounty Hunter like that, you expose yourself to what just happened in front of the Roche Pit. There we it's go. Not worth it. Potential high ground siege. Nether blasting the tower. Super non committal. Life drain. That'll be into Puppy, taking a lot of damage with Decrep on him as well. Sumail and Misery will back themselves up. The Nether Ward has been placed, but they're not in a rush here, I feel like, if you're EG. Even with the Sages, you're not in a rush, I would imagine. No, definitely not. You're totally okay with just chipping away at the tower safely. Sumail has the Aegis, and then, of course, there's a whole bunch of things they have to jump into. And they don't feel forced to commit for this. They can still just play the map game. They are playing with an invisible hero that scouts out these initiators. So. Yeah. So what are we looking for for Secret in terms of their big items? Fada has a BKB, he's working on a Shiva's Guard. Mid one, he went for the Force Yules, trying to keep himself alive, mm -hmm. and uh, he's now finally starting building the Aghanim Scepter, which is actually kind of a big deal. This is an item you usually see first two after like Midas, uh, if you're an Invoker. Yeah. Well, there's definitely a lot of priority on just staying alive, right? Shiva's coming out pretty soon for Fada's Razor. Once you can tank the uh, Sven's damage and he can't kill you in that initial jump, then he gets a bit weaker. That's when he gets static linked hit by the storm a million times and then disabled. Yeah, but then the, the problem is, is now he has a Daedalus and then you get crit. That's true, you die at two hits. Yeah, that's just a problem. Mid one is uh, potentially stalking Misery, or is it vice versa? Looks like they don't know where either uh, each other are, so they're just gonna back themselves up. Walking around. And again, Aegis timer sitting about one and a half minutes for now. And uh, we'll see if EG wants to put this to good use again. They can to sit back and farm. They're Not very eventually, just one. Yeah. Slowly acquiring currency. That's about it. Now a 2k lead, so it, it is slow coming, but they, they still have this lead at this point in the game. Yep. It's one of these games where the gold lead doesn't matter a whole lot, right? It's still just that jump, like we saw in the mid lane. Bounty Hunter didn't die fast enough, Sven gets a double stun, they die instantly. Yeah, and then there's the other side, having that blink, uh, Echo Slam initiation, stopping RTZ from getting off his BKB with a Nullifier is another yep. a, a good part of their jump for your secret, so... The tools are all there, it's just about uh, finding the opening. So EG, again, only about a minute left on the Sages. They'll probably put some more chip damage on this Tier 3 tower. I, I don't think they're going to want to commit super hard to this. They're not really ready. In fact, everybody is keeping back. They're going to use a Fisher on his mail. He has a 4-step if he needs it. Plus, the Aegis is still there, as we just talked about. Yep, 40 seconds He on gets forced forward. He gets hecked up as well and nullified, but he is able to get forced away, I believe, by Fear. Keeps him alive. And RTZ looking to jump in, but they He's don't commit though. anything there for, for Secret. Nothing really used. And just more chip damage for Smail on this Tier 3 tower. Slow and steady. Yeah, they really are taking it slow here. Tornado keeps going, EMP as well. Mid one taking some damage from the Nether Ward. Sumail will be able to back up. And again, still more chip damage on the Nether Blast. The tower getting lower and lower now at 360 HP. They get this tower, you can move into the shrines, but it might be tough to finish off, especially with the Aegis gone in about eight seconds. Yep, just poking away. No commitment at all. So we're going to slow things down, it looks like, Brax. That's right. No Aegis, sit back, farm. <laughs> Might be here for a bit. Your favorite. Now the question is, do Secret get aggressive now that this Aegis is gone? They would like to, but it's so hard for them to actually find the openings, right? We've seen Shaker setting off map the entire game, looking for any sort of gank, but just can't find the right heroes because either all, they're all sitting together or Bounty Hunter has scouted them in some form. Right. By running around, they're placing some, uh, some deep ward. But this is something they can do. Maybe when run around and ghost walk looking for heroes. Right. And there is a gem on Misery, interestingly enough. EG have purchased a gem, so he, he almost ran right into uh, Misery Mid-1 did. He gets caught and killed, and maybe that leads to another Tier 3 tower, but he's able to get out, not get himself killed, with EG all standing around. In fact, they will smoke up. They have vision. Uh, I don't believe they see Mid-1, though. I don't think they have any sentries or detection there. Yep, it looks like they're very aware that, uh, you know, they've inhabited the enemy jungle. They're not there. We're going to go to our jungle, all the way across the map. Maybe this ward might spot somebody in the top lane. It doesn't look like it will. Ace is in the jungle for now. This could be a huge jump. They're going to find him at the moment. It looks like he's just going to back up. Just missed him. Yep. 
the scan from the radiant, perfectly done. They know exactly where EGR moving through their own jungle and heading back towards top. So again, we just slow things down here. I mean, both teams farming. I think RTZ probably feels pretty good about this. Continue to garner that net worth advantage. And what does he even go for next? I mean, what do you what do you buy as your next item on his fan here? Um, I mean, he has. Well, my, thankfully, players make it easy for us. Yeah, his AC buy. and his quick buy. I don't, <laughs> you just put that in his quick buy literally a second ago, so. Perfect. They answer the question for us. And man, prior to that, that, that change was a little bit harder, let me tell you. <laughs> Played a guessing game, huh? Exactly. Oh, this game has taken like a, a weird turn, right? They, you were talking about a gem earlier for Team Secret. They definitely need it to be able to, to do anything because everything they do just gets scouted or dodged and they just can't find the jumps. Uh, did, what did, uh, Puppy just buy, I think, the Vitality Booster. He had a thousand gold a second ago. I thought he might purchase the gem, but he has a Vitality Booster instead. And then there is that Shiva's Guard, also finally done for the Razor. So, this is, uh, they're starting to tank up. Try to survive that initial burst of the Sven. Misery is going to scout things out here. Ace in the mid lane, so too is Puppy. We have some reinforcements coming for EG, including the Pit of Malice available for the Underlord, as well as the Rod of Atos, but they will back themselves up. By the way, Lotus Orb picked up for Underlord. This is an item that used to be picked up super commonly. Not anymore, really. Well, it's pretty good this game, right? You can always just slap it on the Sven, then you can't get static length by Razor. Right. And it also counters the Omni Slash entirely. That is true, actually. Very important item here. And Fear has quietly had a pretty good game. A couple of good pit of analysis. He hasn't used the most dark rifts in the world. We haven't even talked about that ability this game for the Underlord, which is a big part of his play, but... He hasn't really needed it. They kind of use it to get across the map from time to time, but nothing to try to save EG from anything. Yep. The farming Dark Rift, as it were. And another long Roche respawn duration for both of these teams. Two and a half minutes. Well, oh, you sound dead inside. It's cold, huh? It is a little cold here. But... This game will wake you up. Yeah, it's gonna... I'd imagine that there's going to be one of these big fights towards this Roche pit in the next few minutes here, and that's when things are going to get real interesting for both these squads. Yep, it's nice. Roche kind of, it stops the stalemate. Despite, like, EG having this advantage, they don't want to take it too far, right? Yep, they I'm, can't really press the advantage at all, because Sven can't walk up in the buildings at all. I mean, you make this, uh, this blast. You, you make one mistake, you're out of position, you get echo slammed walking into high ground or something, and then you just lose the fight, essentially. Yep, they haven't built up a big enough lead at all. They need to either take a fight outside of the base with them getting the jump. I mean, it's just, it's literally whoever just gets the jump first. If they uh, stack up for a big echo slam, Arteza doesn't get BKB off, gets nullified, then fight's over. I like the move from Secret, though. Realizing they might lose their tier 2 tower in the top lane, they move into the mid lane, and they'll take this last tier 2 of EG. And uh, EG will respond in kind. And they'll start putting pressure on the top oh, tier 3 tower. Down. He can't drop the wards. Yep, there it is. Someone and, has to come back. Yeah, they have to TP home. Already some chip damage into this tier 3 in the mid lane. This is going to be a lot of damage. But uh, it will be cleared out here by Sumail and the rest of the crew. And now they'll go back to work pushing out this mid lane. Well, trying to get ready for Roche. That's been the highlight of the last 10 minutes. Dropping those wards on the mid tier 3. Yeah, there's. it's not been the most exciting last 10 minutes of the game. We had that, that one fight where, where Arteezy pretty much blew up everybody with his god strength. And they had a... They kept Misery alive for a long period of time, but we haven't had any real other team fights since then. You know, it's not exciting, but it's it's the build-up, right? There's Attention a, for sure. Yes. And the mind games as well, just knowing where Secret are going, knowing where EG are going, just figuring out where the vision is, all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's going to build and lead to a head, which is going to happen in 43 seconds, which is when Roche respawns. And EG wanted to force it earlier because they did smoke. But again, Secret... They avoid it. They just sit back in their base. It seems like both teams know exactly when the other team is smoking. And not getting caught because they just know exactly what's happening for both of these teams. Do we have any big items coming out? I feel like we haven't uh, really talked about that. And items are important. Especially for the Jug, too. He picked up the Butterfly. We talked about the Nullifier. That hasn't really been super useful. Not yet, anyway. Mm -hmm. Now building into a Scotty. Slow down this Fen. Try to kite him a bit more, perhaps. Yeah, just tank it up. Evasion, very good against Fen, too. Very nice. It's yeah. literally just all items that help you survive on the side of Team Secret because that's just how EG's fight operates. Sven blinks in, stuns, hits someone. If he kills someone, great. If not, they probably lose the fight. I think this is an interesting choice. Fata picked up a blink dagger on the Razor. It's not something you see super commonly on this hero. Yeah. Interesting. Misery has scouted that Roche is in fact up. And uh, I would assume one of these two teams makes another smoke play here in the near future. Tries to keep the waves pushed out along with it. Yep, we're getting to that point in the game where Roshan will die extremely fast, so... 
Teams have to just sit around the area waiting for it, trying to, you know, not walk away from it, let the team sneak it. This is a very important play here for EG. What are Secret going to do? They're just going to continue to farm. And uh, EG, not sure about the, what they're trying to accomplish. They'll deward for now. They'll drop a, a couple of nether blasts inside the Roche pit. And uh, Misery's going to try to scout things out here. Did they pick up a gem on the Radiant team? No, they still don't have a gem picked up here for Secret. And they're going to smoke as well. So something's got to get here. This could be very dangerous. They're wrapping around. Sumail will get hexed up. There's the Fisher. They're going to jump in. They've got the War Trap. Good double force to get him away. He slid so far. Sunstrike. Blade Fury. Sumail is still alive. Life Drain. He can't get it off in time. He will buy back immediately. Now Crit might be next. He drops the Chain Frost. Doesn't bounce the way he wants to. The Enchant Totem coming in as well. On the other side. Crit now in the, inside the pit. Dark Rift on the other side. Fata. Oh, no. Yeah, actually, they get him out. That's insane. But Arteezy does go down. 86 seconds. He does it by that. They've already used it on Sumail. They're going to find Misery on top of all of that. The Enchant Totem coming in. Sumail, the Ice Path dropped down. He's going to get caught. This, this might be a dive. Oh, it goes down. The cold, the cold Snap's coming in. They force him away again. There's a good pit of Malice, but Fata jumping in. They use the Atos, but they got the Static Lincoln. And Sumail is in trouble. Spent. He's going to use another Blast of Life Drain coming in as well, taking a lot of damage. They want this kill. He walks oh, into the pit boy. of Malice, and Fata is going to get dropped down. He's dead for 88 with no buyback. Still lets a Sven buyback used. Yeah, that is huge. You know, Secret. that whole fight. We were talking about the Blink Dagger on Regazor. He just blinked into the pit, slowed the tent, so he couldn't blink out. Took him for a walk the entire fight, chased him down. Four dead, two buybacks. Doesn't look like EG can contest this. They're moving in that direction for now. Yapsor and, and Ace doing a lot of work. This Roche is dead. This is Refresher Shark. Arteezy will get a kill on the puppy, but it doesn't matter. Ace gets the Aegis. They pick up the Refresher. They're, they're going to try to get out as best as possible. The Aegis comes in. Ace spins away to get out of it. The Life Drain. They drop the Ice Wall as well for mid one. And that makes it so EG cannot chase. And so they use two buybacks. They don't get Roshan. They lose everything in terms of the Aegis Cheese and Refresher Shard and Secret. That is the biggest play they've made in the past 10 minutes, just getting all of that done. Now they've regained the advantage in terms of net worth. That is now a 5k lead for Team Secret. Oh boy, Refresher Shard on Shadow Shaman. That's going to be good. Oh boy, the double wards. That's all you live for if you're a Shadow Shaman player. That's every roster's dream. Yeah. You get that for EG, they get the, the double God Strength if need be, but now it goes in the other hands for Jug. They have the Aegis on him, working on that Scotty still. He actually can buy it now if he wants to. They can save him for buyback on top of it, but with the Aegis, may pick up that Scotty. And if you're secret, I mean, you're thinking when these heroes respawn, maybe you start being aggressive here, get on the other side of the river and get things going back in your direction. Yeah, no buyback on Sven. He's got to play super conservative with these heroes off the map, because if he dies, this game is over. He yep. has all the damage on the side of EG. I mean, we just saw what happened in that last team fight. He got disrupted and didn't hit a single hero the entire fight. Wasn't even close. The voids, the tornado, mid one just trying to keep the waves pushed out. And uh, Puppy has respawned along with Fata. They're back in. Refresher Shard on the Earthshaker for now. So the double Echo Very Slam. Nice. They take one fight, they get off the double Echo, and the game is just essentially won. They found Fear. He can force himself into the high ground. They're going to try to find the Fisher. It's on to three. Beautifully oh, done from the Absor. Oh. The cleave, though, from Arteezy is too much. Fata pops the BKB. They want to bring him down. Remember, if he dies, it's a die back here. Puppy's trying to fight. He gets exploded by the Nether Blast, and now Ace might be in trouble as well. He's got the Ages. Three dead for Secret. They have five back on mid one. They're not going to use the life drain. They've rooted him up. They've got the Aegis now down. And they're going to find another kill here on this Juggernaut. He'll try to get away the Frost Blast. Then the Jin out of the Pit of Malice. He'll try to spin out of this. They're looking for a body block from Misery. They're going to keep track of him. And they should get this kill. Ace can do nothing. He's going to get disarmed. He's going to get dropped. It's the Shuriken coming in along with the Frost Blast. And EG take the fight. Four for nothing. Beautifully done. And that is Aegis down as well. Yeah, very nicely done. The, uh, the crits mod. Jesus. Arteezy is doing some serious damage, and he's looking to get more. He's building into the MKB next. He has hit level 25, the 40 strength, God strength talent now coming out for Arteezy here. He is doing some serious work, still top in the net worth. He is carrying EG to victory at this point, or attempted victory. 1K advantage right now for Secret, but uh, biggest thing, losing the Aegis. Buyback is not available for Jug. They're going to push straight down mid for EG. They have Goshring back up in 10. They want to push this. No they want to try to get a tier 3. They want to try to get a Rax out of this as well. Seconds, no jug. This is going to be huge for Secret. Don't think they can defend without the Jug, but it is going to be a 4 versus 5 fight here as everybody is rotated in from Arteezy. He pops the God's Train. He also has the Lotus Orb on him as well. He's going to get Force for the Pittus Malice. They've got the Hex up. Fata trying to Static Link him. He pops the BKB. The Dark Rift Fear wants to get out of here. They've war trapped him. The Shackles come in as well. Oh. And they 
actually forced Spear away. He misses the Dark Rift, and now EG has to run. RTZ getting lower and lower. Fonda doing so much work. Yapstor trying to get the Enchant Totem. Oh Doesn't even God. need the stun to get the kill. He's dead for 115 seconds, and now the Jug has respawned in 15 seconds, and they will be able to run straight down mid, and Secret can try to finish this game off as well. 100 seconds with no spend buyback. Still not available. Jesus, whose far staff was that? I'm not sure, but it was insane. He just missed on a couple of them, and he only brought himself back, I believe. Yep. That was so close. They could have gotten out scot-free, but losing RTZ there, buyback status. Unavailable. Three minutes and 44 seconds for RTZ for buyback. Yep. And Sumail, three and minutes and eight seconds. So they, they won't have it. They're still dead for another minute at least. Ace is just pushing straight down mid. They still have the cheese. Do they have the refresher shard? I don't believe so. It doesn't look like it. I think they used it in one of these last fights, but... This game gets harder and harder for EG as well. Once Sven's BKB starts to run down, and look at the items being picked up on these secret heroes as well. They're taking up big time. They're going to get this tier 3 tower. And they're going to move on to the racks as well. Secret are in. Puppy can drop wards if he has them, which he does. They don't even need him for this racks because, again, there's no RTZ for 50 seconds. They'll they're drop them. The are they going to go for tier 4? It looks like they will. They want fear first and foremost, and they will find him. He buys back immediately. So still, 3 versus 5. One tier 4 about to drop, and it looks like it will. Secret on the cusp of taking game 1. Good pit of Malice. Doing some work. They will pop the glyph as well for EG. Fear getting caught again. Getting forced away. The Lotus Orb is on him. Taking a lot of damage, but he gets back to the well. They want the second tier 4. The Serpent Ward still going to work. Fada has popped the BKB. RTZ back at the 23. Sumail in 10. Ten Can they hold this? Up. This is going to be close. They use the Sun Strike trying to get Misery. They will drop him down here in a moment. They're trying to bring down Ace as well. Taking a lot of damage. Good death. Blast yeah. from mid one. They've got it. Good game. Somehow get back and take game number one. Bit of roller coaster of a game. Yeah. But uh, that's what happens sometimes. That was super back and forth.